first talk about something called the octet rule. An octet refers to um, a configuration of eight valence electrons because of the word oct. Oct is a prefix for eight. So an octet again refers to a configuration of eight valence electrons, representing the maximum number of valence electrons that an atom can usually have. And this is because eight valence electrons means that the um, atom of the element is stable if it has eight valence electrons. All right, all noble gases, which are elements in group 18, um, are very stable and generally don't react because all the noble gases, which are in group 18, have eight valence electrons. The only exception is HE, which has two valence electrons. But either way, all of the elements in group 18, which are the noble gases, are stable because they have the maximum number of valence electrons that they can have, or in general, that any element can have. So they're stable because they're full and they have the maximum number of valence electrons that they can have. So they're very stable and they don't react. All right. Um, now, uh, just so you know, uh, an octet, which means eight valence electrons, is what all atoms want um, because this is considered stable. For example, Na has one valence electron and Cl has seven valence electrons. And in order for either one of these to become stable, they have to combine to get a total of eight valence electrons each. And this is where the octet rule comes in. Na, which has one valence electron, is to combine with Cl, which has seven valence electrons, to get eight valence electrons each. All right, because they need to become stable by getting eight valence electrons. Eight valence electrons is the maximum number of valence electrons an atom can have, and that means that these elements, when they have eight valence, eight valence electrons, are very stable and don't react because eight is the maximum you can have, except for He, which has two. All right, um, the octet rule re also refers to the fact that atoms react by gaining, losing, or sharing valence electrons to get a complete octet of eight valence electrons which is the electron configuration of a noble gas. All right, so whenever something becomes um, an octet in terms of its valence electrons, it matches the configuration of a noble gas always. All right, and you should also note that the number of protons never changes during this time because the atomic number identifies the element, and therefore the number of protons is always the same. Also, it says you share, gain, or lose valence electrons. You're not sharing, gaining, or losing protons. You're sharing, gaining, or losing valence electrons. So, um, the uh, so the only thing that changes are the valence electrons. The protons don't change, so the atomic number does not change either, because that identifies what the element is. Even if it's an ion, the atomic number and the number of protons identifies what the element is, so neither of those change. So now let's try sample problem using what we've learned, sample problem one. Question one asks for one atom in the ground state with a completely filled valence electron shell. So if we look at group 18, which you can do on your own, we'll see that Rn has a complete valence shell because it has eight valence electrons, or eight as the last number in its configuration, therefore making it stable. All right, question two asks you to identify the element that gets a stable electron configuration by bonding with, the, with another atom. And if we look at group 18, we'll see that the only element without a full valence electron shell, which is for the most part eight valence electrons, or eight as the last number in the configuration, is Ca, because Ca has two valence electrons. All right, therefore, um, Ca needs to get eight by bonding with another atom. All right, in order to become stable. So Ca is the only one that needs to bond with another atom to become stable because it has two valence electrons, but it needs eight usually. All right, therefore, again, it needs to get eight by bonding with another atom. Question three asks why elements like neon, any, and argon, AR rarely form bonds with other elements. Um, neon, Ne, and argon, AR rarely form bonds with other elements because let's remember they're in group 18, so they have a va stable valence electron configuration. And the reason why they have a stable valence electron configuration is they have an octet of eight electrons, which means that it is full. Therefore, it doesn't need to bond with anything because it's already stable. Everything else wants to become stable by bonding, but if you already have the full octet or the octet of eight valence electrons, it's full, so you don't need to do anything. Therefore, that's why they rarely form bonds because they're satisfied and they're stable. All right. Um, now, question four asks why Xe or xenon is a group 18 element. Xenon or Xe is a group 18 element because Xe atoms have a stable valence electron configuration of eight valence electrons. All right, so that's why it's a group 18 element. Group 18 elements usually have a stable valence electron configuration of eight valence electrons or an octet, meaning they rarely form bonds with other elements because they're already full and stable as a result by having eight or an octet of valence electron. Now let's talk about how atoms form what are called ions. Now, first of all, ions are charged particles that form when atoms lose or gain valence electrons, um, forming an octet of valence electrons as a result, which is the same as a noble gas in terms of its electron configuration. All right, so uh, remember that all atoms don't have 
eight valence electrons. So they want that. And how they do that is they, with ions, will usually gain or lose electrons and get charges as a result to get that octet of valence electrons. All right, uh, groups 1 through 13 on the periodic table, you can just look at the columns labeled 1 through 13 on the periodic table, will lose valence electrons, and they become positive ions. All right, and the reason why is because they lose uh, negative charges, so they become positive. So just remember, again, groups 1 through 13 lose valence electrons and become positive ions as a result. All right, and you can think of it as uh, the numbers at the end round down to zero. Groups 1 through 13 will lose their valence electrons to become positive ions. All right, groups 15 through uh, 17, on the other hand, which are columns labeled 15 through 17, will gain valence electrons and become negative ions. All right? Um, because you can think of it as rounding up to 8. They're already so close to group 18 that they just gain the valence electrons and they will become negative ions as a result because they're gaining electrons. All right, so just remember groups 1 through 13 lose valence electrons and become positive ions, whereas groups 15 to 17 gain valence electrons and become negative ions. All right, and I also want you to note that the charge of any ion can, made by an, any element when it, when it loses or gains valence electrons can actually be found as the top oxidation state on the periodic table, which is, the top right, which is in the top right corner of the periodic table. So look at the top oxidation state in the top right corner of the periodic table. That is the top number in the top right corner of the periodic table. All right, so let's see this with an example. Uh, for example, O's ion charge is negative 2 because it's a top oxidation state. N's ion charge is negative 3 because it's a top oxidation state. So you can ignore all these other numbers on the bottom. So N's, um, N's ion charge is negative 3. Al's ion charge is positive 3 because it's the top oxidation state. K's ion charge is positive 1. And Br's ion charge is negative 1. Again, you can ignore the plus 1 and the plus 5 because um, negative 1 is the top oxidation state. All right, so just remember the top right corner and the top oxidation state gives you the charge of the ion that the element forms when it loses or gains electrons. It's a top number in the top right corner. That's how you find the charge of the ion automatically. It's a shortcut and kind of a cheat sheet on the periodic table. Now let's talk about how ions form. To work through ion formation, we first have to look at the ground state electron configuration. That's step one in working through ion formation. All right, so here, if we look at the periodic table, we see that the configurations for S are, are uh, 2-8-18-8-2 for SR and 2-5 for N. All right, uh, in terms of charges, we have to remember that since these are atoms, they don't have an overall charge or they're neutral, so they have a charge of zero. Also, to find the number of electrons, we just add up all the electrons in each configuration. So for SR, if we have at, uh, 2, 8, 18, 8, and 2, and we add them up, we get 38. For N, if we add up 2 and 5, we get 7 for the total number of electrons. So that's how you do it. All right, just remember atoms are neutral, and yet to add up all the number of electrons in the configuration to find the total number of electrons. And uh, this is for the atom. Now, when we have to form ions for each atom, we have to remember the following rule for electron configurations, which is a poem. Uh, valence 3 to 1, lose till there's none. Valence 7 to 5, gain till it's 8 high. So here we see that SR has two valence electrons since the last number is 2. And N has five valence electrons since the last number is 5. Based on this rule up here, valence 3 to 1, lose till there's none, and valence 7 to 5, gain till it's 8 high. Um, uh, we'll notice the following. So based on this rule up here, valence 3 to 1, lose till there's none, we notice that we lose two valence electrons from SR to get 2-8-18-8. Uh, All right? Meaning we subtract or get rid of the last two from the original 2-8-18-8-2 because those last two are gone now. All right, because it's uh, valence 3 to 1, lose till there's none. All right, then valence 7 to 5, gain till it's 8 high. Based on that rule, we gain 3 valence electrons in N on the last level to get 2-8, meaning we add 3 to the original uh, configuration of 2-5. All right? So that's how we get the electron configurations. We either take away the last number or we round up the last number to 8. If it's valence 3 to 1, then you lose the last number, lose till there's none. Valence 7 to 5, gain till it's 8 high, so you round the last number up to 8 if, it's, if the valence number is from 5 to 7 or 7 to 5, however you see it, whichever works for you. All right? Um, now, if we add up the electrons in each configuration for the ions, we get 36 electrons for the SR ion since we've taken away 2 from the original 38, and 10 electrons for the total of the N ion since we've added 3 to the original 7. 
All right, now let's see what the charges of these ions actually are. When we need to determine the charge of each ion formed, we just need to write the top oxidation state in the element box in the periodic table as the ion charge. So whatever the top oxidation state on the top right corner of the element box is, we just write that as the ion's charge. All right, so let's just do this very simply. The top oxidation state, or the top number in the top right corner of SR's element box is positive 2. So we know that the charge of SR is positive 2 because the top oxidation state on the top right corner is positive 2. Right, the top oxidation state on the top right corner of N's element box is negative 3. So we know that the charge of N's ion is negative 3. So it's a really quick shortcut and a really cheap and easy way to do it. Write the top oxidation state found in the element box on the periodic table as the ion's charge. For SR, the top charge is positive 2, so its charge for the ion is positive 2. For N, the top oxidation state in the top right corner is negative 3 here, which I circled in red, so the charge of N's ion is negative 3 when it forms an ion. Very quick and simple way to do it. Now, to get the related noble gas that matches up with the ion's electron configuration, we use the number of electrons in the ion's configuration to find the noble gas. So let's see what that means. Um, for SR, ion, for the SR ion, we have the ion configuration 2-8-18-8. So we look at the periodic table for this configuration and find that KR has the same electron configuration, so that's the corresponding noble gas. All right, for the N ion, we have 2-8 for the ion electron configuration, so we look at the periodic table for this configuration and find that NE has the same electron configuration, so NE is the corresponding noble gas. All right, so that's how you do it. You just look at the electron configuration and find out which noble gas has that configuration to find out which noble gas matches up with the ion. All right. 